Hey, it's Rohani, an island, so much information about the ocean. To be Pacific, I looked into the deep sea and underwater autonomous vehicles. I'll talk all about high frequency wireless power transfer for subsea exploration. Rohani, what are you waiting for? Let's get into it, for sure. So the deep sea starts where sunlight begins to fade, which is about 200 meters below the surface. Then there's a twilight zone with partial sunlight that reaches all the way down to 1,000 meters. The water is cold, has very little oxygen, and has nearly no light. We've only explored 5% of the Earth's ocean. There is a lot going on down there. Our understanding of the ocean plays a huge role in everything from our air to daily weather fluctuations and climate patterns. We've even found archaea, the most ancient life form. They're the most closely related to the first instances of life on Earth. We've learned concepts like chemosynthesis, which basically explains how specialized bacteria are able to create energy from hydrogen sulfide. This gas is toxic to most land-based life, but somehow deep sea life has used it to survive instead of sunlight. Until very recently, it was thought that all life on Earth was dependent upon the sun. Another cool thing we've learned from exploring the deep sea, as little as we have, has been a new source of energy. Hawaii was the first to create an ocean thermal energy conversion plant, or OTEC for short. The system basically draws in warm water from the surface of the ocean and they use it to vaporize ammonia. The ammonia boils and creates a gas and that gas is used to turn a turbine and generate electricity. They then use cool water from the deep sea to cool and condense the ammonia back to liquid state. The liquid ammonia is then put back into the system and recycled. It's a closed loop system. They have to use deep sea cool water because the difference in temperature for the ammonia to actually condense and cool again has to be at least 20 degrees. The ocean is just fantastically cool. The bottom of the ocean contains the largest mountain range on Earth, canyons far grander than the Grand Canyon, and vertical cliffs rising up three miles. That's something Robert D. Ballard said, and he was the explorer who discovered the wreck of the Titanic. Information that we gather from the ocean can help us predict things like earthquakes and tsunamis by studying things like landslides underwater. Everything I've mentioned up until now is literally just the tip of the iceberg, and it's already groundbreaking stuff. I've painted a pretty vivid picture about why we should care deeply about the deep sea. So what is it that we should do now? Explore more. But how? Using autonomous underwater vehicles, or AUVs for short. These are basically computer controlled systems that can operate underwater. It's kind of like the Curiosity rover that NASA uses on Mars, but for the ocean. AUVs have no physical connection to their operators and can stop, hover, and move on their own. They also carry power on board. Most use specialized batteries, but some use fuel cells and rechargeable solar power. AUVs already minimize their energy use by letting gravity and buoyancy do the work for them when it's possible. They're also less expensive than research vessels, collect and process data, and create extremely high resolution topography of the ocean floor until they die. AUVs are limited due to human dependency. The energy components that they use must currently be replaced by a human operator. While small AUVs can last for several hours and larger ones for several days, we're severely limited by something as trivial as a battery dying out. Enter high frequency wireless power transfer for subsea exploration. There are a few different types of wireless power transfer. For this use case, the AUV would be using something called induction. Highly resonant wireless power transfer or HR-WPT supports kilowatts of energy transfer even through sea and salt water. AUVs would be recharged by navigating towards a docking station for charging on the ocean floor. I can explain this diagram by using a very simple and similar analogy wirelessly charging your phone. Some of you may have seen the charging plates and have heard of the Qi standard that basically uses induction for charging as well. If you're interested and you want to hear a super in-depth explanation of the science behind induction, I'll link one of my articles in the description box which talks all about it. For now, I'll give a quick high-level explanation. 
Basically, when electric current moves through a wire, it creates a magnetic field around the wire. When charging by induction, there's always a primary and a secondary coil. The reason we use coils is because bending wire amplifies the magnetic field that's created when the electric current passes through it. Basically, the more loops there are, the bigger the field will be. If you run the current through the primary coil, you'll be able to induce an electrical current in the second one by bringing the secondary coil into the magnetic field of the first. When you bring your phone, which is the second secondary coil near the charging plate, the primary coil, an electrical current is induced into your phone, charging it. The same thing works with the AUV and the docking. The AUV is the secondary coil and the docking system is the primary coil. How this will work with AUVs, however, is a two-part process. The difference between my example of the phone and the AUV is that your phone has a charging plate that's connected to the wall. Where is the docking station getting energy from? Not a wall. First, the docking station will generate AC energy, which is alternating current. It'll do this by using a turbine and wave or tidal movement. A circuit will be able to convert the AC into DC so that the docking station can actually store the power. Then the same process of induction will take place, which is the second part, and the AUV will navigate towards the docking station to charge by induction. Obviously, there are some bigger differences when you're wirelessly transferring power through sea or salt water instead of the air. One important thing I'd like to mention is eddy current loss. I won't get super in depth about how eddy loss works. All you really need to know is that energy is being lost. Any WBT based on electromagnetic theory has some sort of loss that's created due to the electromagnetic induced currents. The AUV system actually uses something to try and combat this because the loss is far greater underwater than it is through air. What they use is something called a shielding coil. All it really does is weaken the EMG currents so that the loss is reduced and the efficiency is improved. However, WPT in the ocean environment is still very much under research because the ocean is stochastic. Some of the factors that we've realized help get over the barrier of seawater in WPT is using a heavier coil and also tailoring the shape of the coil depending on the AUV's design. Because an AUV's design can be different depending on the manufacturer, there isn't really one set way to make the coil. But for an example of this tailoring process, you can check out a study that I'll link in the description box. That same study had some really great results from their WPT system that they tried underwater. Their AUV was able to produce a 72% transfer efficiency with a 100 watt output. For context, typical wireless charging has an efficiency rate of 75 to 80%, and that's through the air. So 72% is pretty darn good for this new environment. Ocean exploration improves ocean literacy. Exploration of the deep sea makes sure that we've accounted for our resources and managed them well, well enough that future generations have access to them. Anyways, I hope you learned something today. The challenges that we face in trying to explore more and more of the deep sea, because remember, <laughs> we've explored very little, actually encourages us to try and fill those gaps with engineering and technology inventions. You can check out all of my projects on my personal website, rahaniwalia.com, as well as any of my blog posts and articles on my Medium. Till next time.